Hi there, this is Colin. So this will be a quick tutorial on getting a programming environment set up for Fortran in Visual Studio Code. First thing is got to get the code editor. So that's at code.visualstudio.com slash download. Click the Windows installer and download it. While that's going, we're going to look up another thing called MinGW, which is the minimalist GNU GNU for Windows. That's going to be the compilers for C, C++, and Fortran. So we'll go to the downloads. And here's the setup. Great. 91 kilobytes. That's about right. It's really small. And this is optional. Um, Git for Windows for uh, retrieving the code off of GitHub. So 2.27 is the latest as of July 2020. And I'm going to get the 64 bit set up. Okay, I'll start with the Visual Studio installer. All the defaults here should be fine. Okay, there's going to be a couple extensions that we want to get. So you go over here to extensions. And actually this uh, C, C++ from Microsoft is a good one to get. Um, I'll be doing the Translating from Fortran to C to C++, so I'll use this extension for that. And then the other two are for Fortran. The first one is Modern Fortran. I'll go ahead and install that extension. Um, looks like I got the latest one, 2.2.1. There's another one that shows up, 0.4.5, which is older. Um, it's from the same person, but you'll know that's the right one um, based on the install count. Uh, so the second one you want to get is actually this one, Fortran Breaks Breakpoint Support for debugging into Fortran line by line, being able to see variables and things like that. So we'll go ahead and install that. And that's all we need to install for Visual Studio. I'm going to go ahead and run the um, GNU for Windows now. This install might be just slightly more nuanced. Um, I'm going to set it up in the root of the C drive is fine. And this should be generating a catalog of the tools that we can install. Um, so all we need, um, do the base bin or tran, and I'm just clicking on them and this menu is popping up um, G++ and the MSYS base as well, um, which just has a couple other little utilities that are useful on the command line. Once all these are checked, you go to installation and apply changes, hit apply, and that will download these packages. These are all uh, Windows implementations of common open source compiler developer tools for Linux. Next thing to do is to make sure that the path to these executables. So here's min GW and these are all the tools that we need. Uh, we need this path to be um, in the path variable environment variable so that you can use it from command line or other programs can use it from command line. So if you type in environment, uh, you should see something that says edit system environment variables. Click on that. And on the advanced tab, there's an environment variables button. Go ahead and click that. Make sure to go down to the system variables and we want the path variable. Click edit. And these are all the paths that are in the path variable. We want to add a new one. 
and copy and paste uh, this path in there. Hit OK, OK, and OK. Finally, to test that this is done correctly, open the Start menu and type CMD to open a command prompt. And if this is done correctly, you should be able to type G Fortran. And let's do dash dash version. And the fact that it's outputting, uh, it's calling the program and outputting the version information tells me that the path is set up correctly. So that's good. Close that down. Um, let's do this next optional one, which is to install Git. If you don't want to install Git, I will show you how to get the code without using it. Defaults look good to me, except for don't use Vim, use Notepad++ or something, something else other than Vim. Being able to use Git in any command line is good. Um, this is fine. Basically all the defaults here are just fine. Okay, so the Git is now installed. And the next step is to get some Fortran code. So GitHub.com on my repository, Sonic Scholar Trans4D is this repository. So to check out this environment, we can actually just click this code button and copy the URL. And the next thing is to put the code where you want it. In my case, um, I'm going to put it in my user profile, Let's make a code directory. And then if you shift, right click to open a command window, PowerShell here in this case. And if we say git clone, paste the URL of the git repository, and then provide the name of the folder you want to check the code out into, which in this case, I'm just going to call trans4d and close that out. And now when we open Visual Studio Code, let's open that trans4d folder. And that should open up the workspace. And then there should be tasks already configured. Um, so in this .vs code folder, these are tasks for running the compiler and copying the appropriate files to the output directory. So this copies both of those um, data files and this actually runs the compiler gfortran. The other, this .json file, provides the parameters to launch the program and debug it. Um, so with any luck, all of these paths that I've just set up on my machine should match these files. So here's all the source code in the source file, documents and PDFs and so forth in this doc folder. And then this bin folder is the output where the executables will end up. So if you go to terminal and click the run build task or control shift B, this should compile the code. And this looks like a problem copying those text files to the output folder. But if I look here in the bin, the exe is there. And then to set a breakpoint, I will go ahead and fix this later, but to set a breakpoint, just go ahead and um, pick a file to set a breakpoint on. I'm just going to go into the main uh, entry point here. And notice this little red dot that shows up in the sidebar to the left of the line numbers. Go ahead and click on the line where you want to set a breakpoint and it goes uh, bright red. Now if you say run, start debugging, it should stop on that line, which it did. And now you can see here on the left side, variables. And then to step through, there are keys to do this. 
Uh, so we'll go over a couple real quick. So there's step over, step into, and step out. And then continue just lets the program run until another breakpoint hits. So I want to step into this call here. So I, if I push F11, that takes me in. And then F10, what I just did there is to step over. Uh, the debugger isn't perfect. It kind of it uh, kind of bounces back up and forth to the, where the subroutine is. Um, but as you keep pressing step over, you can see these variables getting populated. So here's 2pi, and I'm hovering over it, and it tells you that the current value is 0. If I hover over pi, you can see that it's as expected. Over here, you can see the local variables. So here's 2pi. So if I step over again, now you can see that just flashed. Um, so it's pretty handy. Uh, let's go ahead and do one more step in call. So that's F11. And you can see we went through conditional logic. Um, if I want to step out, you could keep kidding F10 until you get to the end of the subroutine. It'll return out. Or if you hit Shift F11, it will pop out to the last point on the call stack. And so there we are. I popped out of there and I can hit that again. Shift F11. And now I'm back into the main uh, routine. Um, so that's pretty much my plan for debugging into the uh, Fortran code and uh, should be a great asset uh, when doing a C++ translation. Um, lastly, I'm just going to hit F5 and let this run. I should have a terminal somewhere, uh, but I don't know where it is at the moment. Uh, it wasn't immediately obvious to me. So the launch configuration is specifying to launch the program in an external console. So this appeared in my taskbar, and this is where the program is. Um, and so th this is how I would interact with the program.